Hi everyone, I'm excited to discuss our work on batch optimization for DNA synthesis. I'm Cyrus Rashton and this video is based on a joint paper at ISIT 2021. DNA is a nice material for storage because the molecules are super small and they don't really break down over time. To store data in DNA, we first split up a file into small chunks. Then we translate 0-1 bits to the ACGT alphabet, and we create DNA strands that represent the data. We store the strands in a test tube until we want to read them back. The main bottleneck is that creating the DNA, which is known as DNA synthesis, is very expensive. Our work is about making it cheaper and more efficient. Let me walk you through an abstract model of the synthesis process. Let's say that we want to create these four strings. The machine is programmed to go through a super sequence, adding one character at a time to the strings. We first add an A to some of the strings, then we add a C to some others, and then a G and so on. We can create all possible strings as long as the machine runs for enough steps. For example, any string of length n takes at most 4 n steps. We refer to the minimum number of steps for a set of strings as the cost of the batch. But each step uses a lot of materials, and so we want to use as few steps as possible. A key insight from our previous work on DNA data storage is that storing data in a set of random strings has many benefits. So we focus on the synthesis cost of random strings. To understand the cost, it is helpful to imagine a random walk through the synthesis sequence. Each character moves us forward 1, 2, 3, or 4 steps. The average cost of each step is 2.5, and a string of length n takes 2.5 n steps in expectation. For a batch of m strings, the cost will be at most 2.5 n plus a deviation term. For biological reasons, we sometimes use strings without sequentially repeated characters, which are known as homopolymers. In this case, the random walk takes 1, 2, or 3 steps, and the expected distance is 2. And the total cost for m strings is a little bit more than the average. This is a nice improvement, and we show in our paper that these bounds are essentially tight. Now that we have gone through the basics, we can talk about using multiple batches. Storing a lot of data means that we need to synthesize a lot of strings. Each machine can only create so many at one time, and we have to split them into batches. Naively, the cost for k batches would be k times the cost of a single batch for either unrestricted strings or strings without homopolymers. Our main result is that we can do better by grouping strings together in a smart way. Take m random strings and sort them by their synthesis cost with respect to the ACGT repeating supersequence. Put the m over k strings with the lowest cost in one batch, the next m over k in the next batch, and so on. We prove that this leads to a total cost for the k batches that removes a factor of k from the deviation term. Let me briefly describe the analysis. Consider the cost quantiles for each of the batches. We can imagine pairing up a low cost and a high cost batch. If we look at the cost quantiles, we see that the sum of the costs of the two batches is about 5 times n. This is because we save a bit for the cheap batch, and this balances out the more expensive one. Formally, we can analyze the empirical cost quantiles with the dkw inequality. So far, I have talked about grouping unrestricted strings into batches. We can save even more if the strings do not have homopolymers. The key idea is to use different supersequences for different batches. Some batches use ACGT repeating, and others use the reverse sequence TGCA repeating. Any string without homopolymers has cost at most 2n for one of these two options. This is nice because we don't have that extra square root term. Using the batching process and optimizing the supersequence gets us down to a total cost where we actually subtract a term from the average. Just like with the single batch results, we also prove lower bounds, showing that this is the best you can do for multiple batches. That's all I have time for, but if you have any questions, check out our paper and please get in touch. Thanks for listening.